This is a production of PBS Charlotte. The following episode of Charlotte Cooks is brought to you by Central Piedmont Community College and viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to this edition of Charlotte Cooks. I'm Chef Pamela Roberts, and I am very, very glad you're here with me today because joining me, I've got someone fresh from the Caribbean, Miss Cheryl Watkins, and she's here from Miss Elsie's Caribbean Bed and Breakfast right here in Charlotte. Welcome, Cheryl. How are you today? I am well, Chef. Thank you for having me. Great. What are we going to make today? I'm going to make you a Creole Mahi Mahi. What do we need to make Creole Mahi Mahi? Well, Chef, we're going to get started with some Mahi Mahi. We're going to put it in a lemon bath. Ooh, a lemon a bath. A white wine and lemon bath. Let's just start with two fillets. And then I'm going to grab some white wine for you. Any kind of white wine or just? I prefer something sweet, but okay. I don't mind. If it's dry? It's... Yes. Remember, guys, we talked about this before, about having wine that you cook with. Make sure it's something you'll drink, because you're not always going to cook with the whole bottle, so you want to have something you can have later. And I take a couple of pieces of lemon, and I use lime. I use both. All right, so let's give it a little bath, and when you... Take it and you're gonna flip it in, the, in the, the bath a little bit, turn it over a couple of times, and you're just gonna let it soak a little bit. Let it soak up some of that. And what we're doing here really, Chef, is just, for me, as my grandmother would say, we're just giving it a little cleanse. We're gonna oh, yeah. mm -hmm. give it a little mm -hmm. acid cleanse, and mm -hmm. then we'll mm -hmm. take it to the sink, we'll rinse it off, and then we'll go back and season it. Right. We're gonna grab a little cumin, all right? We're gonna put a little poultry seasoning. We're coming back with a little ground clove. This sounds a lot like a jerk seasoning. Is it, what's different between this and a jerk seasoning, besides the heat? <laughs> <laughs> jerk has a lot more uh, hot okay. pieces to it. Okay. And this basically is just for us. Uh, not going to be too hot? Not, a, not But Creole's got to have some heat. We got to have some pepper yeah. else we ain't being yeah. from the island. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so you got to put a little flavor in there for me. And then, just a little pinch of salt. I put a little kosher salt in it for me, all right? Brings out the flavor in the, in the food. Then I just like to take it and make a nice rub. Oh, nice. I'm just going to rub it all in. And I'm going to just make sure I get all the seasoning. And you rub them together. You get all the seasonings interacting with each other. Give me a nice rub. And that stays on, too, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it doesn't oh, yeah. go anywhere. Food to me and has to tastier. taste good. Oh, yeah. From the seasoning before it even gets in the pot. Absolutely. So how long, Cheryl, will we let this season um, we'll let the seasoning sit on the fish? We can let it sit for at least 10 minutes, mm -hmm. but my preference is to let it sit overnight. Oh, overnight. Because, yes, okay. because when you let it sit overnight, the seasons really get into it, mm -hmm. and then it just tastes so delicious in the morning. You have to do morning. this with a nice, sturdy piece of fish, though, right? But absolutely, yes. Mahi-mahi yeah. is one of my favorites, mm -hmm. but you can do it with kingfish. Okay. Red snapper, okay. any one of those thick, okay. good okay. stick fish where you season it up and you have a nice seasoned base in it. Most of the times when we cook in the Caribbean, as my grandmother and them mm. would do, they're going to season it overnight, they're going to put it in the fridge, they're going to mm. put all the provisions in it, yeah. and then we come back in the morning and they do make the things cook. happen, yes. I'm going to add a few more of the green provisions. What so are you going to add? This is a little bit of thyme. As we prepare it for the, you know, for settling, we're going to put a little oregano, right? Mmm, yum. And then we're also going to put a little fresh parsley to start. And you could also use cilantro when you Absolutely, you're cilantro. If you didn't like cilantro, obviously leave it out. Mm -hmm. Substitute oregano. Right. But certainly you could use cilantro. There's a little bit of hot sauce that I like to put in here as well. And what kind of hot sauce is this? This is a, like a chipotle? This is a chipotle pepper sauce today. But I can use scotch bonnet. That's my preference is a scotch bonnet pepper sauce. So let's just okay. let this sit and we'll enjoy it. And then I'll be that ready to put great. it in the pot. So chef, I'm going to complement this with what we call fungi. Fungi is like polenta, okay. but it's also it's like a yellow cornmeal grits. Mm -hmm. So basically in the Caribbean, any fish that we do, particularly in the Spanish islands and so mm -hmm. forth, and, and predominantly some of the British islands like in Barbados and... Um, Grenada and those kinds of islands. They would normally call it uh, fungi, but fungi is made with like okra mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. forth, and mm -hmm. they stir it in and they mix it in, and fish is served with fungi. Okay. But we're going to make it plain today because it's more 
trying to just be accommodating and we make it just as a yellow cornmeal base. And we're going to have a lot of flavor in the fish. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll start this on a nice medium high. I always cook my fish in a cast iron. That's just how I like to cook it. That sounds wonderful. And I mix a little bit of the oil with the butter. I just like to just get a little bit of butter flavor, not much, mm -hmm. right? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And the oil is going to help keep that butter from burning. Absolutely. And you're going to saute it in together. And then we'll start to add our provisions. We're going to put a little garlic, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to come back with some scallions. Scallions are big in Caribbean cooking, Absolutely, aren't they? absolutely. There's been a lot of things with scallions that I've been eating. And some of the seasonings really is, we call it shadow benny. Like mm -hmm. in Trinidad, they'll call it shadow benny, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put some thyme. I'm going to add some more here. I want to add some bay leaves to this pot, all right? And basically all I'm doing is trying to brown down the provisions inside of my pot so I can absorb some of the flavor, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw a couple of peppers in here, but I will use them more so for garnish. Okay. All right? And then I'm ready to just add my fish. And all she's done is just the vegetables so far. Mm -hmm. Here we're then coming up with the fish. All right. Just make sure you get everything in it. So when we did the uh, wine and the lemon juice and the lime juice in the beginning, that wasn't necessarily for a marinade. It was just to give it a nice refresh, just clean it off. Absolutely. And make sure the fish is ready to go. All right. And then you just basically that. pan sear. Look at that. And that's what you get when you're cooking a cast iron skillet, guys. That's beautiful. it. Let me nice, get beautiful pan sear. If you have a little water for me, that would be great. Then we take it and we just garnish across the top so mm -hmm. that you can bake in the flavors. Mm -hmm. Turn this one over. Pretty. It's beautiful and it smells so good. And we're done. Um, so that's just going to sit there now gonna until simmer a little bit. we get the fish done. So now we're going to make the fungi. fungi. So chef, we'll begin with adding boiling water. boiling water, right? Then we'll take a bouillon. Right, and you just mash it up. Squeeze it. You mash can squish it. that up. Mm -hmm. Squeeze they it. Squish it. Up. Woo! Whoa, wasn't expecting that. Okay. And then oh, break okay. it. Mm -hmm. You just take it and you squeeze it. And you mash it up inside the pot. Okay. And then I will add some butter. Okay. I'll probably just add two pieces more so it becomes nice and creamy. Okay. Chef, mm -hmm. I'm going to add a little cream. All right. Just like grits, That'd if you want nice. to. Yeah. It becomes nice and creamy. If you didn't have cream, you could use half and half. Half you could and use half. Milk. If you're vegetarian or vegan, you can use your almond milks, your almond mm -hmm. base, and so forth. I'm going to borrow a little bit of your pepper, just a pinch. I'm going to add a little of this, just for flavor, but also for color. Mm -hmm. And you just put it in your pot. And you're just going to let it slow boil. Three to five minutes, we'll just go ahead mm -hmm. and put them in the pot. And as it boils up and then the flavors incorporate, then I'll go ahead and add, stir in the fungi. All right. All right. So we'll slowly add it in. You don't want to put it in fast because you don't want it to be lumpy. Just like grits. You don't want yeah. lumpy grits. You want to take your time and slowly add it. And you'll feel it starting to get thick Absolutely. too, won't you? Yes. You'll feel the resistance against your spoon. Now, Cheryl, does it make any difference if we use white cornmeal or yellow cornmeal? No, if you want to make grits. And you want to use grits with your fish, so mm -hmm. be it. You want to bring breakfast to the table at night, yep. by all means. But this is not a morning or evening meal. Mahi-mahi mm -hmm. is what we serve in the morning for breakfast. Seriously? Absolutely. Oh, wow. I've yes. got to come to your place for breakfast. You got to. <laughs> and so, as you see, it's starting mm -hmm. to cream up. And as we turn up the fire just a little bit on this one, so it can cook a, a little quickly, mm -hmm. then there we're we going go. to turn it down and just let it simmer. Right. And How you can cover it, it. You can simmer for at least for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to be grainy. Although this is a medium coarse harina, mm -hmm. you want it to be creamy, mm -hmm. but coarse enough so that the fish can sit on it right, as a nice right, bed. Right? right. And you just keep stirring it. You, you just keep careful. stirring it. You let it rest on a low fire. As you see, it just gets prettier and prettier mm -hmm. and yellow. It is pretty. It's a nice, pretty yellow base. Yep. Right about here, we're ready. 
Okay. Okay, there you are. There you are. So now and they turn let's their talk their fire about down. our salad real quick because we're going to put okay. a little salad on the side of this, right? Yes. I'm going to just cut myself a few pieces of cucumber to garnish my plate. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just like cutting things on ovals. I have an yes. issue with round and, and straight lines. We'll take a couple slices, right? We'll just go around the middle and prepare these for the plate. Okay. I'm going to grab myself some tomatoes. All right. And basically, I'm going to give you an oval cut today. <laughs> All right. We'll grab a little kale salad, kale for our base. I'm going to grab a few pieces of cucumber and make the plate pretty. And because it's Caribbean, you know, we have to have a lot of color. Absolutely. So you can't bring a plate to the table if it's not colorful. If it's not colorful. Hey. <laughs> it's got to have color. Absolutely. I'm going to take this and let this be my base for my fish. I'm just going to ball this up a little bit for you. I'm going to put it right here in the middle. Okay. And I'm going to just grab this nice little piece of fish right here. Mm -mm -mm. And I'm going to just plate them right here for us. Look at that. And then I'll grab a couple pieces of the peppers that are already in the pot. Okay. And if we want, we can even add some more fresh peppers to it. I'll give it a pretty garnish, but we don't necessarily have to. I just like the color. Make it pretty. So here we have, for Miss Elsie's bed and breakfast, fresh from the Caribbean, we have a mahi creole with fungi, peppers, a crisp salad. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful dish? But this is a marvelous this. recipe. First thing we're going to get started on is the bakes, aren't we? Yes, we will. OK, so what are we going to use for the bakes? For the bakes, we're going to start with a about three cups of flour. Okay. Right? We're going to put in our bacon powder. Okay. Right? We're going to put a little sugar, a little salt, and we'll mix up your dough. And you're just going to mix these dry ingredients together Correct. so they get nicely incorporated. Right. And mm -hmm. then we're going to add a little bit of fat. This is quite like making some of the pie dough because except we don't have baking soda or baking fat to our pie dough. And so what we're gonna be doing here is mixing our dry ingredients together, then we're gonna put our fat in and mix that up until it's kind of mealy. It looks kind of like a really coarse cornmeal. And we're gonna add some water to it and bring it all together. This is a lot like making a biscuit. In fact, you mentioned, Miss Cheryl, that they were like... Um, Bakes are to the Caribbean as biscuits are to the South. There we go, there, you there go. we go. So we're gonna mix that until it looks like this. And then we're going to let this dough sit for about 45 minutes. Once we've, we've mixed it and we have the rest in it rest, okay. then we'll set our pot to uh, fry. Fill your pot enough for the bakes to float. Flour your uh, cutting board. Flour it nice so the dough doesn't stick. And then you just start cutting out your portions. For every three cups of flour, you can probably get about 12 to 15 bakes out of the Okay. You mix. And um, you try to make them as consistent in size as possible, correct. but you know, usually you can end up with some big ones, some small ones, and right. it doesn't matter because you're going to monitor the, the frying of them each on their own. Right. And so once you get them all folded up into little balls like that, we're going to lay them out on a sheet pan and we're going to flatten them a little bit so that they actually end up looking like this. What's going to happen is now we're going to let them sit for another 15 minutes and then we're going, they're going to get nice and fluffy and we're gonna put them in the oil over here and we're going to cook them up. And I'm gonna do that while Cheryl is helping us with the salt fish stew. So you're doing this. Mm -hmm. So what you're, you're taking it, you're rolling it into and a ball in your hand. And then you just pinch it to bring a nice neat ball in your hand. So you're just pinching it like a this. pinch and fold, correct, a little okay. pinch and fold. And mm -hmm. so what that's doing is a couple of things. It's giving it a nice smooth surface on top, correct. isn't it? Yes, you want it to be okay. nice and soft and smooth All right. so that they have the chance to breathe. Okay, and then we're just going to spread that out like that and put them on the uh, sheet pan. Is that it? You're going to get a rolling pin. Rolling pin. And you're going to roll them Here. out. I mean, you roll it size of a, a little bigger than a, a disc or, you know, biscuit size, actually, if that's familiar. Okay. Right? And you want to get a Depends nice roll on it. Depends if you're making a cat head biscuit. Correct, correct. <laughs> and then you just take them in your hand and you stretch it out. So yeah, it's a oil nice is hot, Correct. And you set okay. them aside. You want the oil to get at about a good 350 degrees. Not to burn, but okay. nice and hot. So you want to get a nice sizzle on the, 
on the, uh, the, the bakes. One thing that we're looking at to go in our bakes is a salt fish stew, okay? So one of the things that we're looking at here is a salt cod. And you can get salt cod from a lot of different places. And this, this I got this at the local grocery store. It usually will come wrapped in a bag. You know, you can find them in the freezer and that kind of thing. So this one is a product of Canada and it comes in a nice little wooden box. And you open it up and what you see inside here is the salt cod itself, okay? You can see big pieces of the salt cod. Okay, you're gonna pull this out and you can see we've got nice long big pieces of um, salted fish. And so what we have to do with this to get this ready to make is we have to remove the salt from the fish. And so what we do for that is there's a couple ways of doing it. If you wanna do it the long way is you basically take the fish and you put it in some water and let it soak overnight. Or you can take it and you can boil it, but you'd have to trade that water out, what, two or three times two or if three you're boiling? Times to get the salt out Yeah, because there is a lot of salt in this. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're gonna soak this overnight, I would also trade out that water maybe once, just before once or twice. you actually, once or twice, yeah, just before you get it um, finished so that we can actually not have the salt. All right, do you think this is ready to go? I think so, let's take a chance. Okay, why don't you Show us how to take a chance here. Got a little bit of water. There oh go. yeah, there we go. Okay, so just drop down. those in. Yes. You're gonna lay them down in your pot. You okay. can lay as many as you can get in your pot. Don't crowd them. Don't crowd them. You know. Leave plenty of room <laughs> so you can flip them and move them around, all right? There you go, right, right. And you just slide them over. We have enough room for about five in this size pot. Okay. Where's a spatula? There you go. Okay. And you just keep an eye on them so mm -hmm. that they don't, um, and you just want them to, to brown on either side and the bakes will float. And s like people from Guyana will say, they call them floats. Okay. In, in, uh, Dominican, uh -huh. in the Dominican Republic, they're, they're bakes or Johnny okay. cake. Some people make them round, some people don't even flatten them. Okay. Some people just make them, they drop them in the, the mixer dough, maybe it's a little softer, it's okay. not as dry, and okay. they'll just drop them in the oil and you can have them as, so they're, they're served in a, a variety of ways, as always with all cuisine. And you let them brown on either side and you want them to come to a nice light caramel brown. Getting nice and fluffy nice in there and too, fluffy and, Yes. And that's the, the, the deliciousness in, in mm -hmm. your float because you want to be able to take your salt fish, slice right. it, Put it inside. So it's got a little, like a little right, pocket You make it like sandwich. a little mini sandwich. Yeah. Right? So when you do that, you do it with eggs, you do it with a salt fish stew, you could do it with um, the fish cake. Okay. However you want to serve it, serve a plantain and a little salad. That's usually okay. how we present the meal. Everything for me has to have a little plantain. My grandmother loved oh, plantain, so yeah. plantain and salt fish and bakes. Now Jamaicans usually do salt fish with ackee. Okay. And ackee is a traditional fruit on the, in the Caribbean. Now, mostly the Brit British islands okay. have ackee and salt fish. Okay. And that's a traditional staple in that side, in okay. the British islands in the Caribbean. Okay. And that's traditional. Africans use it as well. Uh, Spanish people call it bacalao okay. and bacalito. So a lot of the Latin countries, right. that's how they serve right. it. Right. Italians use it. Italians right. use it and they use it with um, the polenta. Okay. And it's served with uh, the polenta and salt fish. And so, when I have guests from all around the world, it's not a staple it, it, that everybody's not familiar with. It's really interesting how sometimes, um, even though we say this is a typical Caribbean breakfast, Correct. you're gonna find these same elements all across, all across the world, the world. served in different ways and Absolutely. all kinds of things. Yeah. Why don't we get started on the fish stew? Sure. Absolutely. Right. I wanna heat my pot, and okay. then I'm going to just put a little oil, a um, teaspoon, tablespoon of oil, because okay. you don't want the, the salt fish to stick. You're going to drop a little garlic. All right? You're going to give me some onions. Some peppers. Red peppers inside this stew here. You want to brown everybody down, give me a nice caramelization inside the pot. We're flipping these over here. Okay. Right. You're flipping so. your bakes. All right, now these are almost done, Cheryl. What do you think? Do you think these need to go yeah. a little bit longer? No, they're very good. They're good? Yeah, you've done a nice job, All Chef. Right. Put them on your thing. And over here, you're gonna give me a little uh, thyme, right? Mm-hmm. Give me, I, my favorite thing is some scotch bonnet ah. peppers. 
You gotta have the now, heat and Caribbean food. You're gonna have to tell us about Scotch bonnets because Scotch. I've got a bowl of Scotch bonnets here, and I want you to tell me about when I go to the store and look at Scotch bonnets. What am I looking at? They're colorful. So mm -hmm. when they're green, they're not as hot as when they're yellow and red. These are milder. You can make good hot sauce with the green. Okay. But you want the red ones and the yellow ones make a nice hot pepper sauce. If you want to just put that in some vinegar with onions and, and make that a, a seasoning. No, this I, one, on the other hand. I've heard people say that you can um, put boiled carrots in with them Absolutely. to make it not quite so hot. Absolutely. And Kinda you like put a little it. pinch of sugar in your vinegar, you put it in a bottle and you let Shake it. Shake it up. Absolutely. Now I'm going to add my salt fish to this. So you take okay. this out of your water here. All right. So show them that salt fish. Okay. This so is it, a salt fish cod. Okay. All right. It's a pretty piece of fish. Mm -hmm. You put it in your pot and you just flake it down. You just break it up. There's yeah. a fork? Yes. And you just take your fork and you just start flaking. You cut it. I can do both ways. So you want it to be kind of flaky. You don't yes. want it to be like all mushy. You just no. want it to be nice and flaky. Oh boy, look, Beautiful. it's going to be spicy, y'all. Delicious, delicious. Oh, this thing yeah. delicious. It doesn't have to be hot, and that's an optional uh, ingredient, really, if you don't want to. Um, so you can make use it, it as hot as you want. Absolutely, to. absolutely. But saltfish is really just like a mild. You don't have to overkill. Some people who like pepper will always add pepper, so you leave room for people to add pepper to their. To now, their could you fish. use a jalapeno in this? You can, but. It just depends on the flavor. I prefer the Scotch bonnet. Because really they have do. a very distinct, distinct flavor, Distinct flavor. Too. It yeah. gives you the unique. Because Scotch bonnet is really what makes Caribbean food distinct in its flavor. It makes it different than absolutely. jalapeno food, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I personally just like to add a little curry okay. to my to my saltfish. All right? And this is just a regular curry powder that you can buy in the store? Exactly. You don't have to make up any Nothing kind of special, special curries? A little paprika. Okay. Right? And... You give me a little pinch of black pepper, not much. I like a little parsley. So you give me my green. I love it for the color. I'm and very colorful in my food. You know, a lot of times, folks, when you get parsley on your plate as a garnish, parsley is usually the most nutritious part of the dish that's on your plate. So parsley is a very, very, it's very high in iron. Absolutely. It's got a lot of really good things going on with it. So don't be shy in using parsley. It's really delicious. Oh, that looks it's delicious, food. Cheryl. So we stir it in, make sure everything is all cooked is in it? really well. Almost done. Scallion on top. One thing that you mentioned also that goes with this dish is plantains, fresh right? yes. plantains. Yes. I want you to tell me about these plantains because, you know, you go to the store sometimes and you see the plantains and you never know what kind to buy. Right, right. right. This is what I found in the store just the other day. Okay. So when I'm looking to buy a plantain for this dish, what would I look for and what would I choose? When you're looking for plantain, you really want it to be a beautiful plantain is always the one that's big and yellow that looks like uh, a banana. Right, As okay. yellow as a banana, that's okay. pretty. But you want a good ripe plantain mm -hmm. to have some tenderness. So like, you okay. know when a banana is not too ripe and not too soft? Yeah, when like they're these. a little bit dark, like this, mm -hmm. that means they're getting really ripe. Okay. So you want to hold it, you want to be able to squeeze it a little bit, you want okay. to have a little tenderness to it. Right. The softer it is, of course, the sweeter it is. Green plantain, we normally use green plantain when we do like a fish stew, like if you're doing a kingfish, like you're doing an escovitch. Because these you're aren't doing, sweet. Right. Okay. Or you can do it like Haitians do it. Haitians take green plantain, mm -hmm. they'll slice it, mash it inside the skin, mm -hmm. salt it, fry it, mm -hmm. then they'll come back and put it back in the skin, mash it again, and they eat it. Dry. Oh, like a tostone. Mm, there you oh, go. Oh, you guys have seen those, yes. I'm sure. A tostone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. These are your overripe plants, and you got to be really careful with these because these can be too dry. Okay. If, they get, if the skin is dark like this and, and it, there's no firmness in it, it's dry. You don't want to buy that one. Okay. All right? So okay. we won't get that. So answer, this is what you're looking for for a sweet, juicy fried plantain. Right. If you like sweet plantain. And if you're doing it for not so sweet, you want to get the green ones mm -hmm. and think about more of a savory dish for mm -hmm. this, Correct. like with your fish. And these, leave them in the store. Mm -hmm. And okay. if you're using a green plantain, you, we also serve green plantain usually boiled. So okay. you can boil a, okay. you boil a green plantain, you take your fish, you take your stew, okay. your onions, you put it on top, and you serve that on, as a side dish. Does it have a banana potato. flavor? 
It's a little bit like a banana, but plantain still. Not they're quite. cousins, but they're right. not the okay. same. Okay, all right. right. It's not the okay. same flavor. Got no. it. Cousins, mm -hmm. but not the same. Right. All right. So, how about we go ahead and plate up? You want to do that? Absolutely. Okay. So, what we're going to grab is a couple of plates. Sure. And why don't you put the fish stew in here? Sure. And I'm going to grab a little bit of salad because we're going to put a little bit of salad with this. Okay. I want to borrow your scoop of chef. Sure. The salad is, I, I love green salads with just about everything. And I'll put salad on almost everything I'm going to be eating. So then I'm going to grab a bake. Mm -hmm. Ooh, which one should I use? I'm going to grab this one. How many should I put on these plates? Oh, uh, you can put two. two. Sure. Okay. Because you want to be able to suck on. it up. Correct. Um, Give them something to eat. Because then they're going to think we're being meager, Chef. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we don't want them to do that. Chef, you okay. know, folks that come to see me like to eat. These are your fried plantains. Yes. These are already done. Absolutely. So we're going to put a couple of these on our plate. Wake up. Caribbean style. Here we have some fried bakes, some uh, salt cod stew with salad and some fried plantains. I hope you try these recipes at home. You can see this wasn't too difficult. It was very easy and went together lovely. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Send me an email at pamela.roberts at cpcc.edu. You can watch this show and past episodes on PBS Charlotte Passport or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Chef, for having us. We enjoyed it. And we'll catch you next time on Charlotte Cooks. Production of PBS Charlotte.